worship this morning, please join us in our gathering song.
in Louisiana. Dinner tickets are available in the narthex, um, and then uh, the raffle back baskets are also on display, and you can get raffle tickets um, there um, to bid for the baskets. Vacation Bible School is coming up. With the uh, wonderful morning we have, we can see the summer is upon us. <laughs> and uh, so that's for, from on June 3rd, starts on June 3rd through the 6th. Uh, registration is now open on that website, sharedinter.org. And uh, you can find the registration under upcoming events or scan the QR code in the bulletin. Then the women of the ELCA uh, invite you to their event tomorrow, uh, April 8th at 7 p.m. and that will be in South Hall. Finally, we have some clipboards for worship assistants. We always like to widen the circle of people who can help out here at worship. So if you feel so called, look at what's available and uh, consider signing up. And with that, Let's we'll start worship with this song. Yeah, we have an Easter song to sing and we invite children forward to play along with us on the instruments. <laughs> Yeah. 
the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep, and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into, free into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Hallelujah. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Eastern people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Hallelujah.
rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Your church cries out, O God, and you listen. As you draw near to the disciples, draw near to us this day. Breathe on us your Holy Spirit, that our faith is renewed and we witness to your love. We especially remember those who are persecuted for their Christian witness. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your creation cries out, O God, and you listen. Nurture trees, crops, wild flowers, and all growing things. Guide farmers, gardeners, arborists, and others who tend the soil and nurture plants into life. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your will cries out, O God, and you listen. Give the leaders of the nations and to all people that peace which the world cannot give. Guide police, firefighters, paramedics, and other first responders to work for the well-being of communities and the dignity of every person, that no one may need to live in fear. God of grace. Your children cry out, O oh God, can you listen? Hear your people crying for justice for an end to racism and other oppression, and for a world where all are fed and safe. We ask comfort for those experiencing illness or pain, especially Kurt, Dave, Austin, Kay, Sage, Carol, Skip, Dale, and Carrie. God of grace. Your congregations cry out, O oh God, and you listen. Make us hunger for your word and thirst for your goodness. Breathe your spirit upon others, and all whose confidence in your grace has been shaken by tragedy. Open our hearts to discern what God calls each of us to serve. God of grace, hear our prayer. And accept our gratitude, O oh God, for the lives of those who now rest on you. Grant us your peace amidst our fears, wipe away the tears of all who grieve, and turn our doubt into confidence, so that we may cry out in adoration and joy, my Lord and my God. God of grace, we are prayer. And together, into your hands, most merciful God, we the men of all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love, through Jesus Christ, our resurrected Be with you.
risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. And now join me in praying the prayer today. Let us pray. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. First reading is from the fourth chapter of Acts. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned land or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Today's second reading <laughs> is from the first chapter of First John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father, and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you may also you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father, and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is, atoning. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand as able to greet the dead. Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, 
peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And he said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve was not, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. And he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen, yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing it you may have life in his name. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated. <laughs> This time I'd like to invite the fourth graders and their parents and guardians to please come forward here at the front. You were encouraged to read the Gospel of Mark together. This is an important step in your faith journey, and today we celebrate this step in your walk with Jesus. As disciples of our Lord Jesus, we acknowledge the Holy Scriptures as our source of truth and life. We hope that you have enjoyed the time you spent reading the Gospel of Mark, and I encourage you to continue reading God's Word, to learn and to tell its stories, discover its mysteries, honor its commandments, Rejoice in its good news. May God's life-giving words, which are sweeter than ever, inspire you and make you wise. Parents and guardians, on this important day, we ask you to place your hands on your child's head and shoulder and ask you uh, to read this blessing that you see on the screen. And you can insert your child's name instead of saying the child's name. <laughs> Go ahead, you need to say it all the time. Congregation, let us congratulate these students that they have completed this part of their faith journey. Jesus Christ. 
and proceeded by Lent, a 40 day time of fasting, prayer, and penance. I think we know what Easter is, but what does that saying, that expression, Happy Easter, mean? Or why do we say Happy Easter to someone that we see at this time of year? I've been thinking about that expression, that question, the last couple of weeks. I've also been wondering why the expression Happy Easter, if it has become commercialized, or if the significance has been diminished, or if it has just become a pleasantry, a common pleasantry that people say to each other at this time of year. At Christmas time, many people will say Merry Christmas to each other, often as a pleasant greeting to one another on the streets. But Merry Christmas, besides the celebration of Christ, the birth of the Christ child, saying Merry Christmas can also mean may you have a blessed holiday season, may you have love and peace and caring and goodwill. But I think Happy Easter is different. It doesn't carry quite that same meaning. Easter or Resurrection Sunday is a Christian fellow festival celebrating the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Easter is about giving thanks to God for this gift of new life in Christ's resurrection. In fact, Easter is more than just one day of the year. The Easter season is 50 days long. In fact, each Sunday when we gather for worship, we have a little Easter celebration. Easter is so much more than you and me. More than bunny rabbits, candy, ham, spring, and butterflies, and everything else. It is so much more than just an expression or a greeting. And it really isn't about an expression that means may you have a blessed, happy holiday. May you have peace and love and blessings. Now, please, don't get me wrong. Don't misunderstand me to say that there is something wrong with saying Happy Easter. You can certainly say that. <clears throat> but what should we be saying? Why are we saying it? What are the better words to use? The more appropriate words to share and to say would be how to open Easter worship on that Easter Sunday. Words that the angels said to the women at the tomb. Words that Peter and the other disciples shared with the other disciples. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Now, some of you may think, what's the big deal, Peter? Jamie, why are you making such a big deal of this? In fact, you just got through telling us it's okay to say Happy Easter. So why do you continue talking about it? What's your point? Well, what I'm trying to get at is that it's more important than just an expression. Our words are more than just an expression. Our mission, our calling as disciples of Christ, as children of God, as church members of Sharon Lutheran Church is more than just an expression, a greeting. But it often starts there. And our words are important, a tool for us to share Christ's mission with others. Take a look at today's scripture. What is the scripture for this second Sunday of Easter telling us? I pulled out a few words that are repeated over and over again in Acts 4 and in 1 John. Words like declare, testify, proclaim, <coughs> write it, gave, and testimony. The scriptures for today are all about the disciples sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. Sharing the Easter news. Yes, a happy Easter, but so much more. Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. First John says, we declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life is revealed. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. 
in the book of Acts, we have the beginning of the church. After Jesus ascended into heaven, the disciples began their mission as people of God, people of the way, Christians. A whole group of those who met together were of one heart and soul. They cared for one another, and there wasn't a needy person among them. They focused on sharing the good news, telling of God's love in Jesus, and how Jesus had risen, and what that meant. So much more than just happy Easter. The ending of today's Gospel reading from the Gospel of John tells the whole purpose of the Gospel of John. It says, Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, but are not written in this book. These are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, that through believing you may have life in his name. Earlier in today's Gospel, Jesus appears to his disciples behind locked doors after he is resurrected from the dead. They get to see him, to hear him, and to touch him, to know of his resurrection. But someone wasn't there. One of the disciples wasn't there that day. Thomas, who was called the twin, not the doubt. Nowhere in the scripture does it call Thomas doubted Thomas. Nowhere does Jesus demean Thomas and call him doubting Thomas. But Thomas does hear about Jesus appearing to the other disciples. How did Thomas hear about it? John 20, verse 25 tells us, so the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. They were excited. Why wouldn't they be? You know that the word must have gotten up. Even though they were afraid and locked up in a room because they were scared, the word, the good news that Jesus was alive, got out and was spread throughout the community. Last Sunday, both Pastor Tawanda and Pastor Karen told us in their sermons that in the Gospel of Mark, the women kept silent. But we know that could have been true. For we have the story. We know the whole story that Jesus is alive. They had to have told someone. Can you imagine if Easter morning had happened now, today? Us with all of our cell phones and etc. The disciples, both the men and the women who went to the tomb and saw the angels, those that saw Jesus behind locked doors, they would have been texting, texting and tweeting right away. He's alive! Hashtag, hallelujah. <laughs> they would have been taking video and posting it to Facebook and YouTube. They would have been posting pictures on Instagram, taking selfies with Jesus. They would, they would have been doing TikTok celebration dances and probably trying to get Jesus to dance with them to share the news. The news would have spread so fast. So Thomas hears about Jesus appearing to the other disciples. And he rightfully questions it. We would probably too if we weren't there in the room. In John, Thomas said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the nails in his hands, my hand in his side, I will not believe. So a week later, Jesus appears to the disciples again. This time, Thomas is there. And as I said, Jesus does not chastise Thomas. Instead, he says to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and touch my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas then replies, my Lord and my God. And Thomas joins right in with all the other disciples, proclaiming, declaring, writing and giving their testimony and their life to share what they have seen, what they have heard and know about Jesus. To all so we can hear and believe. For like Thomas at first, we do not see Jesus face to face. 
but like Thomas, we do eventually get to see him and to touch Jesus in the scriptures, in the communion, in the church, and in one another. Jesus calls all who believe in him to share the good news so that all can hear and come to believe. To not just wish a happy Easter, but to proclaim the love of God. To proclaim the good news that Christ has risen. I want to close my sermon today by giving you a gift. A gift that is for you, but also a gift for you to share. Can I have four volunteers this morning? Four people to help pass out something. I'm not going to make you do a dance or anything. I do. Is that one of the buckets? You? You? We'll just pass out the eggs. Give everyone an egg. Here it out. Everyone, young and old, doesn't matter how young or how old you are or where you are from, everybody gets an egg. Don't open it yet. Just wait until I give you further instructions. come over here too and help. She's working all by herself in this side of the room. <laughs> all three of you, all, put, all three of the adults are working together over here. <laughs> One young person is taking care of all.
and how the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you to eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. I invite you to please rise as you are able for the blessing. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah! The God of resurrection joy, the Christ of unending joy, and the Spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. We are bringing the instrument out, so kids, you are invited to come and play. Uh, also, a reminder of the announcement that we have two congregational meetings, uh, one to vote on updates to the Constitution, and one to approve a loan of up to $950,000. Your voices and your votes matter, and so we invite you to stay for those right after this one. Share your bread. We will. Thanks be to God. 